Okay, so uh, good morning and hello to my first live stream on YouTube. Uh, it's been a long time coming, so hopefully everything will go according to plan today. Um, we will see. Uh, Bertie is slumped sleeping on the floor in front of me at the moment. So hopefully he'll behave. Um, however, I will be using lots of sentences with his name in the example and um, it might uh, overexcite him, he might want to come and join in. So first things first, welcome back to everybody. If you've taken a break from these lessons uh, to have some Easter fun with your family and welcome back to anybody that just doesn't, hasn't had a lesson since uh, Friday. And uh, if you are new, please can I remind you that you can find a document, it looks like this one, this one um, is recycled from a few weeks ago, a document like this is available on my Facebook page within the group called English Live Resources. And there are six different tasks on there that suit uh, different learning abilities and learning styles, um, most importantly. And they're not necessarily age, aimed at any particular um, age or year group. Um, but you will find they do get progressively worse, <laughs> more difficult, <laughs> not worse at all. So uh, you can find that in the group. And also in the group is where you can post uh, any pictures of your work that you do today or any videos and, and such like. OK, it's always really nice to see it. And I know other learners and parents really enjoy seeing each other's work and commenting on it. So uh, first of all, we've got a few hellos. Right. Apparently my mum, who, as many of you know, does my production from 40 miles away, watches and gives me tip off, says... She says that uh, you can't quite see the top of my head, so hopefully you can now. <laughs> okay, so hello to uh, Aaron, who is 10, uh, to Willow in the Chilterns, who sent me a fabulous joke, um, but I forgot to write it down, so Willow, I'll have to read that joke out in tomorrow or Wednesday's lesson. Hello to Simran, who is 10 in South Wales, who's been busting out in the comments. Uh, thank you for joining today. Hello to Dilly and Jack. Hello to Kira in London. Um, my mum says, it's me being silly. You, I had it on a small screen. Okay, so mum could, everyone can see the top of my head. It's just mum who hasn't quite got the technology yet. <laughs> um, hello to Anshu, who's 10 in Bracknell. Um, hello to Ruby and Sophie in Hertfordshire, just down the road from here. And to Tegan, Hayden and Declan in Colchester, who are having their first lesson today. So I hope that you enjoy it and that you join in with all of our coming lessons. It's uh, we, we have great fun. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, to Charlie, Alfie and Amelia, it's also their first lesson today. So I think I've covered everybody on this list. So we need to get on with our lesson. So many of you will know this, I often start with a little activity that just gets our brain muscles moving around a little bit. Um, and today's one is similar to the ones we've done before. My uh, printer decided to um, fall out of love with me about two hours ago. So some of my <laughs> resources today are handwritten. So what I would like you to do for our starter activity is to come up with as many words as you can using the letters from the word adverbial, okay? I'm gonna give you about a minute, minute and a half to do this, okay? Good luck, off you go. Play. <laughs> Thank you. 
how did you get on? You come up with many words? I think next time I do this activity, I should do it as well and see how many I can come up with. Um, so we'll move on. OK, so today we are going to be looking at using fronted adverbials. Now, this is something that parents mostly um, have a little bit of a panic about um, because they're unsure um, what they are or how they can be used. And they really are the simplest thing. So uh, hopefully this lesson will be a good refresher for those of you um, who've done this at school. And um, hopefully for parents, this will just put your mind at ease that this is a really simple topic. Um, it's usually taught from year four onwards. So if you're um, a younger learner, this might be completely new to you. But um, like I say, it's nice and simple. So what is a fronted adverbial? Well, we know that an adjective is a describing word and a um, verb is a doing word, word. And an adverb is a word that describes how an action takes place or how it's carried out. And we know that front means at the front of something. So all a fronted adverbial is, is words or phrases. You can copy this down if you want. Are words or phrases that are placed at the beginning of a sentence, which are used to describe the action that follows. So it really is that simple. Now, more often than not, it is or the, the um, fronted adverbial, and I will give you some examples and we will go through it in a bit more detail, is followed with a comma, but not in every single case, okay? The national curriculum states that often fronted adverbials are followed by a comma. But I would say if you're new to fronted adverbials or you, if you've just started learning them at school, um, opt for a comma unless you find yourself in a situation where you're pretty sure that no comma is needed. OK, so shall we move on to our first task? OK, uh, before we do, a few hellos, because so many of you are tuning in today. So um, hello to George in Whitley Bay, who's nine and it's his first lesson today. George, I hope it's the first of many. And hello to Charlie from St Nicholas School in Abingdon. Hello to you and all of your friends at school as well. I hope you're not missing school too much. Uh, OK, so. Um, fronted adverbials um, fall into different topics and we're just going to look at three different um, topics for them today, different uh, groups of them if you like. So um, feelings and manner, um, time and location. So those are the ones we're going to focus on today but there are, there are many, there are all different sorts of them and when you do the tasks after the lesson you'll be able to practice doing different ones in different ways. So I've got some sentences about Bertie and we are going to try and come up with um, a possible uh, fronted adverbial to put on the beginning. So the first sentence we're going to look at is this one. So Bertie sprung into full view of the camera with a bone in his mouth. Let's hope that doesn't happen. To, well, maybe it would be nice if it does happen. Um, we're going to put a fronted adverbial onto this sentence, OK? So we're going to put a word or phrase on the beginning that um, gives us an indication of the feelings or the manner or the way in which um, Bertie um, springs into full view of the camera. Now, I have got some examples. I'd like you to try and come up with your own. I'll pick one as well. And um, we'll talk about it afterwards. But if you can't um, think of one of your own, you can pick which one of these you think would best suit this particular sentence. So unfortunately, courageously, suddenly, joyfully, mysteriously, carefully, unexpectedly, silently, without a sound and sadly. OK. So I'm going to give you a minute. I want you to think up your own one and uh, write them down on the page. OK, so we build up a collection of sentences with a fronted adverbial. OK, off you go. Play. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
did you come up with some nice ideas? I've written down a few that were coming up in the comments, some fantastic ideas in the comments. Um, lots of really good fronted adverbials, but if you remember, I asked us to try and come up with a fronted adverbial that um, explains or suggests the, the way in which Bertie um, springs into full view of the camera rather than um, the timing or the, the location. So uh, some really nice ones I saw, awkwardly, um, without warning, and with a burst of action. So that's a really nice one as well. It really gives us an idea of Bertie all of a sudden pouncing out in front of the camera. And that's why fronted adverbials can be quite a useful tool. They do give us that little extra bit of information to uh, really paint a picture for our readers. OK, um, I probably would have chosen, and I know it was one of the words in the list, but I would have chosen unexpectedly um, because that is the sort of thing he does. He goes from being fast asleep to all of a sudden just being full of energy and getting in the way. Bless him. So we're going to move on to a, another sentence now. Now, this sentence, um, I want you to come up with a fronted adverbial that um, gives us an indication of, of when or the time and the um, time frame or oh, just dropped lots of paper uh, that the action takes place. OK, so this is our sentence. Bertie stopped and wondered how many miles from home he was. Oh, I got the right one. Yes. We'll use this one. Uh, so some examples that you could come up with um, immediately in the morning, last night, once upon a time, sometimes after a while, all of a sudden, eventually later on a Friday in December. OK, so lots of options there. You can come up with your own one. Remember, these are just practicing using those fronted adverbials. Um, and what you will notice is there is a bit of a crossover in topics. That's absolutely fine. So again, I'm going to give you about one minute to come up with some ideas and I'll keep an eye on the comments and um, pick out some good ones. OK, off you go. Play. <laughs> Some lovely ideas coming up in the comments. So well done um, if, if you got some really good ideas and you pop them into the comments. So um, some nice ones that I saw, I just wrote them down. Where did they go? Ah, uh, later that day. So later that day, Bertie stopped and wondered how many miles from home he was. Uh, that's a really good one to um, show the, the time frame or when something happened. And... OK, um, I've used the wrong example sentence, but it will still work. It's fine. And uh, hello to Clemmie in Cambridge and also to Sylvie in Doncaster. OK, hello to you guys. Hope you're enjoying the lesson. So uh, let's move on now to um, another topic for your fronted adverbials. This one will work for location. As you can see here, this is when my printer decided that it had uh, had enough. Didn't want to. Didn't want to participate in lessons anymore. So, uh, what could you put on the beginning of this? So it says Bertie wandered out of the house looking for yet more trouble. So we're looking for location, fronted adverbials that um, 
that tell us where this action takes place. So for example, you might come up with something like beside the sea, out of nowhere, wherever they were, of everyone, sorry, everywhere, um, under the stairs, in the distance, behind the tree, over the bridge, in a faraway land, in the middle of the desert. I hope he wasn't ever on his own in the middle of the desert. Uh, so um, just one minute to come up with your own fronted adverbial um, for this sentence to give us an idea of the location where um, the action is taking place. OK, off you go. Play. <laughs> Okay, some lovely ones coming up in the comments. So Charlotte and Harry came up with um, through the door. So that's really good. That That's a, a lovely um, fronted adverbial that tells us a bit more about the action as it's taking place and where it's taking place. Some others that I thought were rather good. Where did I write them down? Beside the lake house, Bertie wandered out of wandered out of the house looking for yet more trouble. So we might take out in that instance um, of the house. So you might have beside the lake house, Bertie wandered out looking for yet more trouble. And also um, in the middle of the road, Bertie, whoever came up with that idea, you must know Bertie because that's the sort of thing he does. Um, and for people who are new to these lessons, Bertie is my dog if you're slightly confused about why we're talking about this Bertie character. So in the middle of the road, Bertie wandered out of the house looking for yet more trouble. Again, we'd probably take out of the house out of that sentence if that was our fronted adverbial so that it made more sense. OK, so those are three different topics um, that you can use for um, giving extra information for your sentence. So your fronted adverbial could talk about um, how an action happens, um, when it happens, where it happens, why it happens. Um, but the fronted adverbial can also be an adverbial phrase. So it's not at the front, it's somewhere else in the sentence and it gives the same information. So I've got an example here, but you're probably thinking, well, why do we have both? So the one up to the top here, Bertie slumped into a heap under the table and under the table, Bertie slumped into a heap. So this particular example here, um, this is it be the under the table uh, adverbial phrase is at the end of the sentence. And here it's at the beginning, followed by a comma, of course. Which one do you prefer? Which one makes more sense? which one sounds better. So often we're deciding whether we're gonna have an adverbial phrase or a fronted adverbial based on what the sentence sounds like. So the flow of your writing. I personally prefer the fronted adverbial um, in, of these two examples. So under the table, Bertie slumped into a heap. You might feel differently. Okay, um, what I would like you to do is to go back to one of the sentence that you have just come up with. And I want you to take your fronted adverbial and I want you to turn it into an adverbial phrase. So you'll have two sentences with the same information, but the sentence is, um, is structured slightly differently. And have a think about which one you think sounds better. I'm gonna give you one minute to do this, okay? Go. Play. <laughs>
Okay, sorry, I'm just looking at all these fabulous comments and lots of you asking about Bertie. He really is becoming the star of this show, isn't he? So a couple of hellos. Um, hello to Poppy and Molly who are watching in Northern Ireland. Hello to Bonnie who is nine in Gateshead and to Irene in Banbridge. Hello to all of you, I hope you're enjoying the lessons. And um, lots of you were saying you preferred the top example and that's absolutely fine because uh, both ways are right. So, and oh, and some of you said, what is an adverbial phrase? And I don't know if that's just a delay on the comments coming through, um, but it's the same information that you would have in your fronted adverbial, but it's not at the front followed by a comma. It's at the end or elsewhere in the, in the sentence. And I've underlined um, the adverbial phrase in this example. So it's under the table. It's exactly the same as the fronted adverbial. Okay. So we are at the end of our lesson today. It was just a short introduction to um, fronted adverbials or a, a short refresher if you've already done this before. Um, and I just wanted to remind you that the purpose of using fronted adverbials or adverbial phrases um, is to vary your sentences. So this is not how you should be doing every single sentence OK, you need to mix it up a bit, different sentences, OK, so that your writing is varied and interesting and engages your reader. OK, now there's no hard and fast way to learn how fronted adverbials um, work in every single example. Uh, the only way you can get to really good grips of this is just practice and reading and over time and it comes more naturally as you progress through your learning. OK, so um, don't worry if it feels a bit clunky to you to start with. It will become easier over time. OK, uh, so uh, lots of you have asked for a short story about Bertie. Well, I will tell you that whenever we open the front door he just absolutely runs and sometimes the only way I can get him back is by opening the car door so he thinks that we're going for a um, walk or to the woods or something and um, a good few weeks back now I opened the passenger door and he jumped in but he jumped onto the into the footwell of the driver's seat and I had the engine running because I was about to go out and he sat on the accelerator and <laughs> there was big puffs of smoke everywhere and lots of noise and he used lots of petrol in one go. He's a real cheeky monkey. So end of the lesson today. Please can I ask you to go and download this PDF so you can do some of the tasks related to fronted adverbials. Uh, the purple task is really tricky today, so um, that would be best suited to um, upper key stage three students, I would suggest. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow's lesson, which is uh, writing plays for performance. Um, Wednesday, we've got an introduction to Sherlock Holmes. And Thursday, we have a key stage one, key stage two special about how to structure your stories. Key stage three, you're absolutely welcome to join in. But I just wanted to make sure we had something for our younger learners. And then on Friday, we have the Spellathon. OK, enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the sunshine from home. Thank you for joining me today and I will see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Play. <laughs>